All right, so today I want to introduce you to the rainbow banana ball python. And when it comes to the rainbow banana, it can be pretty confusing because there's actually two different rainbow bananas. There's one that consists of two genes, the rainbow and the banana. And there's another one that actually consists of four genes, the banana, the pastel, the pinstripe, and the spider. And let me tell you, there's a huge price difference between the two, especially like if you're going to a reptile show and you see a rainbow banana, you may be really excited that you may kind of be tricked into thinking it's the expensive version of the combination. So the rainbow gene is actually a recessive mutation that's really rare. It's a type of albino and it's extremely expensive. If you actually run into a rainbow banana that has the rainbow gene, it can be super expensive versus if you actually see the other one, it's about 20 times less expensive for the cheaper version of the rainbow banana. So today I want to jump over the internet and I want to show you the difference between the two different rainbow banana ball pythons. All right, so I'm going to jump over here on the world of ball pythons, and I want to start with this snake right here. This is where things can get a little bit confusing. This is actually a rainbow ball python. The rainbow gene is a recessive mutation. It's a type of albino, and as a hatchling, it looks almost identical to a hatchling coral glow, which is pretty interesting. As a matter of fact, if you put a rainbow right next to a coral glow, you'd almost think they're the exact same snake. You could probably get them confused until they start aging a little bit. The rainbow actually keeps a lot of its color and doesn't really get a lot of the spots that the, the bananas do. When the bananas age and mature, they get all these little freckles all over the snake. It's completely different than the rainbow. It gets a little confusing. So I actually wanted to show you this and compare this to the banana. And this is what a banana looks like. Looks really similar to a rainbow, especially when you're talking about the rainbow bananas. You can get them confused quite a bit. And the banana, you kind of have to watch out if you're actually getting into the banana project because especially if you get a male, the males can be either male makers or female makers. So as a matter of fact, I actually have a banana male that's a male maker and everything I breeded to half the offspring come out as bananas and all those bananas are always males. You'll get no females from that banana. I'd say that's probably one of the most challenging parts of the project working with the banana. And actually I wanted to show you a couple differences in the price between the rainbow and the banana. So take a look at this. I actually found this snake over here. This is actually a rainbow enchi with enchi in the mix. As a matter of fact, I actually couldn't find just a rainbow by itself over here. There's not a whole lot of rainbows over here on Morph Market. So the rainbow enchi, if you actually look at the price on this one, take a look at this. This one actually is for sale for $5,000. Pretty crazy if you're actually getting into the rainbow project. And I actually pulled up the same thing instead of the rainbow. I actually pulled up the banana enchi instead of the rainbow enchi. And let me tell you, this is definitely one of my favorite combinations as far as working any other gene into the banana. And that is the enchi. And for some reason, the enchi working into the banana, I actually did a video on this. And it seems like if you have a banana enchi combination with almost any other gene, you can make some, some of the most amazing combinations and essentially what the enchi does is it really reduces the pattern almost giving it like a banded type pattern and for some reason when you work it into the banana it seems like it really cleans it up and sharpens it and gives it a lot more contrast which is pretty interesting but if you actually look at the how much the banana enchis are take a look at this this is 200 bucks for this banana enchi which is a really good deal this is kind of crazy so you're looking at the difference between 200 for banana enchi versus 5,000 for for a rainbow enchi. So take a look at this snake. This one is pretty confusing right here. So this one's actually listed as a rainbow banana. And at first glance, you're probably thinking, all right, this is gonna be super expensive because it has the rainbow gene and the banana gene. And if you actually take a look at the price on this one, this one actually sold for $200. And at first you're looking at this thinking, man, that is a deal of a lifetime, $200 for a banana rainbow. But come to find out this is a slang name for a completely different combination. As a matter of fact, I actually looked over here at Morph Market and there's quite a few snakes actually listed as rainbow bananas.
bananas with all these jeans and they're a lot more inexpensive than getting into the rainbow project and such a what this is this is the combination of the banana the pastel the pinstripe and the spider so essentially what this is if you actually combine the pastel and the pinstripe that is the lemon blast which is a it's a pretty awesome combination and if you actually add the spider to the lemon blast you get the spinner blast which is kind of kind of crazy so essentially what this is this is a banana spinner blast with the spider the pastel and the pinstripe with the banana pretty awesome combination so take a look at this one. This is actually what I suppose you could actually call this the killer rainbow banana. Essentially, <laughs> what this is. So this is actually the same thing with two copies of the pastel, and just instead of just one copy of pastel. So look at what two copies of pastel does to this snake. It really lightens it, really makes it smooth and creamy. Really amazing combination. And this one's a little bit harder to hit because you actually have to have. Uh, the pastel in both parents to actually get a super pastel which is a little bit harder to hit plus you actually have three other genes in the combination this one's actually listed as a banana killer spinner blast which is you know the the killer is usually a slang for super pastel and then the spinner blast is the combination of the pinstripe and the spider so that is the banana killer blast pretty awesome so here's the Enchi. If you actually work Enchi in with banana, you can pretty much improve any banana combination. Now let me tell you, if you work Enchi in with the rainbow banana, you can even improve it even more. So I wanted to show you what the rainbow banana looks like with the addition of Enchi to really clean it up and make it pretty amazing. So take a look at this. This is essentially what the Enchi does to the rainbow banana. Probably one of my favorite combinations. And it's kind of interesting. You actually see some of this white coming up the side on this combination and essentially what that's coming from that's coming from the spider and the spider can be pretty variable from one example to another sometimes the spiders can bring up a lot of high white on the sides and sometimes you almost can't see any white from the spider in some of your combinations as a matter of fact i've actually produced some spider clutches here in my collection and it seems like you know all hatchlings all from the same parents side by side have different amounts of white from one example to the other so i don't really think you can breed for like a high white spider which is pretty interesting so here is a lesser i kind of wanted to show you what the lesser looks like when you work it into the rainbow banana and the lesser is pretty awesome. It's actually in the blue eyed leucistic complex. And when you actually breed the lesser to any of the other genes in the blue eyed leucistic complex, 25% of the time you'll get an all white snake with blue eyes. So that's one thing you have to kind of keep in mind, especially if you're working with uh, combinations with a lot of genes. And then you hit the all white snake, and the all white snake will pretty much mask all the other genes in the combination and usually what happens when you work lesser into a lot of other combinations it really brightens it and a lot of times it'll actually increase a lot of your contrast in the combinations so here's what happens if you work lesser into the rainbow banana take a look at this this is probably kind of unexpected as far as working it into a combination like this it's completely different than most of the combinations when you're working lesser into it and one of the reasons is it's because banana Banana is so visually dominant as far as the color it just really overwhelms pretty much all the other genes in here you can definitely tell the lesser kind of scrambles up the pattern a little bit and it looks like the lesser kind of lightened the head <laughs> gave it kind of this almost like a pale head which is kind of interesting for a banana combination so this one's actually listed as a banana queen spin and keep in mind that some of these slang names are a little bit hard to kind of get used to every time you see queen you know there's at least two genes in the mix so queen is actually if you see queen you know yeah at least have lesser and pastel in the mix and that's kind of where the queen comes from and then the spin is the combination of the pinstripe and the spider so if you actually look at all the genes in this one this is actually the banana the pinstripe the pastel the spider and the lesser 
So here's another gene that works pretty good with the rainbow banana, and that is the calico. And the calicos can be pretty variable. Essentially what the calico does is it brings up a lot of white in a lot of your combinations. And I've actually seen a lot of calicos that actually will bring in a lot of kind of a, almost like a coppery orange color, which is pretty amazing. It almost acts like a dark morph in certain combinations. And a lot of times the calico will also kind of streak out the sides and give you these really wild streaking patterns on the side of some of your combinations. So here's what happens if you were calico into the rainbow banana. Take a look at this crazy thing. <laughs> essentially, essentially what this is, this is the almost the same as, uh, as a matter of fact, if we actually go back over here, I kind of wanted to show you this, how high the white is on this compared to if we remove the calico and it can be kind of tricky. You can actually see on this combination, you see quite a bit of white coming up the side from the spider. And sometimes you can kind of be trick you know thinking that there's actually calico in a mix like this and sometimes it's pretty difficult but if you actually notice on this one usually the spider never comes more than about 50 percent up the side of the six matter of fact this is you know more of a white than i've actually seen on any spider combination it almost looks like there's calico in this mix but if you actually compare it to this one you can definitely tell that the calico brings it up even further into uh, pretty much all the pattern just on top of the snake so here's the last one I wanted to show you. This is actually the addition of the bamboo to the rainbow banana. That is the, the least expensive rainbow banana without the rainbow gene. And this is kind of interesting what the rainbow does, uh, what the bamboo does. Essentially what it does is it completely wipes out all the pattern. You're almost left with a white snake, which is kind of interesting. So the bamboo is really visually dominant as well as the banana. And for some reason, when you mix all these genes together, you kind of get this washed out snake which is kind of wild and if you're actually thinking about this snake as a breeder it's a really super powerful breeder instead of you know a lot of times when you mix a lot of genes together sometimes it can wash out the snake but if you actually took this and bred it to something else that is the true potential of what you can do as far as breeding this to something else so I was actually looking at the genes over here this has some pretty amazing genes so essentially if you bred this to something else you could reproduce this combination. You could also produce all these individual genes, the pastel, the bamboo, the spider, the banana, and the pinstripe, and then you would make a bunch of combinations. You can make some pretty amazing stuff. For example, you can actually make the pastel pinstripe, which is the lemon blast. You could also make the banana spiders, which are pretty awesome. And then you can actually make the bamboo pinstripes, which is almost like a, like a, like a metallic looking stick, especially if you were pastel the bamboo and the pinstripe together sometimes it can look almost unreal as far as how metallic those snakes can look and the bamboo spider is a really awesome combination it really brings a lot of really kind of a spider pattern to the bamboo and you get a lot of the bamboo color probably one of my favorite combinations as far as bamboo and the other thing is is i was actually looking at some of these if you actually work pastel into banana a lot of times i've actually produced some banana pastels and you really can't see the pastel in the banana a lot of times i'll actually sell them as a banana possible pastel because it kind of gets wiped out and then the pastel bamboos is a hatchling you really can't tell the pastel bamboos from the regular bamboos until they start getting some age on them and then they turn into like a yellow colored bamboo which is pretty awesome. All right, so what is time for the question of the day? And Scott Owens asks, how many snakes would it take to be beneficial to sell them at a reptile show versus selling them on morph market? And that is a very good question. So I've actually seen people at reptile shows just selling a handful of snakes. And sometimes what you really have to do is when you go to a reptile show, you can actually be a little bit creative. And sometimes people will use some dry goods along with some of the stuff they're selling. So you can actually find some stuff wholesale if you can find it and mark it up a little bit and sell it at the reptile show along with your snakes. I've seen a lot of people do that especially when they're starting out so you don't have just a, you know, a handful of snakes and a big empty eight foot long table sometimes it can be kind of crazy and another thing you can actually do if you just have a few snakes is sometimes you can go to some of your reptile stores and kind of ask around and see if someone else is looking to share a table I've seen some people you know side by side sharing half a table where people just have a few snakes and then you know on the other side of the table the same table they'll actually be selling from a complete 
completely different seller. So that's one approach. And if you actually have more than just a few snakes, let me tell you, it's probably the easiest way to sell your snakes is selling them at a reptile show. So actually when I'm selling my snakes on Morph Market, it's pretty complicated. So I'll post like, you know, seven or eight snakes at a time and then I'll have like 30 people all <laughs> respond and they're like, hey, I want this snake. I want to put them on hold. I want to do a deposit or they start asking questions. And let me tell you, all the questions and comments and then you're taking deposits and holding them and then when you actually sell them you have to box them all up and figure out all your shipping labels and the packing you have to bring it to FedEx and let me tell you it can get pretty confusing versus if you sell at a reptile show I've actually sold up to probably like 30 snakes over two days and it's just like you're just selling snake after snake after snake really super fast and it's really easy and painless you just a lot of times you just put them in like in a little deli cup or in a snake bag or something like that and you really don't have to have you know all the complication of selling it on morph market although the kind of the benefit of selling on morph market is you can pretty much sell year round so you can sell a few snakes at a time and kind of spread out your income over a longer period versus selling at the reptile shows so i was actually in the first couple first couple of years i was only selling at the reptile shows and the problem is is you'd, you'd have to kind of hold all your hatchlings back until you actually go to the show and then you go to the show and you make a whole bunch of money and then it'd be like several months later until the next show so you have these these months where you had a lot of money coming in and some months with no money coming in versus if you're selling on a morph market it kind of spreads it out evenly over a longer period of time so that is pretty much it thanks for watching and i will see you in the next video Thank you.